G'day viewers, well today I was doing a bit of a clean up in the back of the shed and I found an old VS out and out off our car. It was all in pieces, it wasn't worth fixing so it was going to get thrown out so it had a diode and everything in it so I said why not take the diode plates out and make something with them, another rectifier for our stick welder. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a sheet of this, I don't know, one inch metal um, or steel, flat steel about two millimetres thick. I have one there, drill holes for those diodes and try and find a good way to um, solder them in or weld them if I can or get a, get a, try and find a good way of connecting them like that. Lever bit for a connector for jumper cable. I did the same with this one. And bolt them to a nice setup and I could just plug a, um, a 200 amp uh, stick welder into it. So yeah, so I could just I don't know, blow various shit up, at least rectify the D-Circ and blow various fucking... Yeah, there were all sorts of cool things like that. Anyway, yeah. I cut me... I measure it up and I cut it up and I'll show you. Okay, viewers, I think I found a way I'm going to connect these diodes. I managed to find the length of, um, self-foss or brazing, um, bronze, uh, silver solder. What the refrigeration people used to the solder compressor lines and stuff with. So hopefully this little pencil blowtorch um, lasts me long enough to solder all three. I'll probably have to refill it about a half a dozen times, but we'll see if I can get it to work. I'll light it up, put the camera down here, and I'll light it up. Ready? Put it on three. See if the camera can see that. I'll try and raise it in front of the camera if I can. Yeah, need more heat. Yeah, need some more heat. Had a bigger blowtorch or something, this would have been perfect. Come on, you can do it. Nah, not hard enough. Not quite hard enough. Nah. Not hard enough. Well, this burn needs to clean them up then. I have to get myself a better blowtorch. Just clean the whatever coating might be on them, so. so Probably, this will probably give me a better connection, so that's a pity this thing isn't hot enough. Oxy acetylene would have been better. Come over here. Oops. Hmm. Yeah. Flames aren't hot enough for it. It's too cool. Solder didn't even barely change colour. Yeah, that's not hot enough. Oh well, that would be how you would solder it though, with that solder I'm in. AC goes in the, in the heat sink half, and DC off this half. So yeah, same way I connected the other microwave I've been trying to solder my own. So if I screw these down to a bit of wood, or something, yeah, a bit of wood, have a heavy duty wire come into it to connect this for the inputs. We have them side by side. Heavy bits of wire, which I'll, I'll do that later on. Find a wooden board to bolt it all onto. And yeah, these are going to be tabs to find which one's positive and negative. So yeah, I'll try that. Okay, viewers, after digging for some tech screws and bits and pieces, I put this together with me. Terminations and stuff. This is what I come up with. Big heavy wood tech screws. Some, um, Galvanised steel bushes, clamp on there, clamp in there from the welder, comes out through here, my outputs. Gotta find a better way of connecting these up though. So that's just how I'm gonna do it at the moment. So that will work. I'll put multimeter on there and see which one's um, positive and negative, and just a bit of spray paint. 
No, actually, I don't have spray paint. I'll just use texture for now. But later on, I'll get some spray paint and do it all properly if I get time. But yeah, that's sort of what the rectifier thing is going to look like. A little portable thing. Put in any um, AC outlet transformer. Yeah. So long as they've got enough current, you can burn some stuff. Yeah, you wouldn't, I wouldn't have done those screws without this big jewel. Blue point, heavy duty um, cordless jewel. Low and high speed, all your clutch settings, battery capacity indicator and everything. Yeah, nice 18 volt, come with two spare batteries. So now I'm going to test it out. Okay, if you always have got it rectified, I have to use a jumper cable for me. Um, the main workpiece, because the workpiece way connect on there, has two big fat little jaws to bite onto. The common fits, but I've had to use a jumper cable to replace the workpiece bit to fit it on there. So yeah, it's 38 volts, which is in reverse, so this is positive. I'll quickly get a text to the mark that once I get this all connected up. So yeah, negative, positive is on my side. Ooh, look at that, not connected properly. It's not connected up in here. I had it the wrong way, I read it. Yeah, DC, let's go AC. 47 volts AC. Yeah, I've got a bad connection. Yeah. Depending on what the road is set on. Put it back the other way, it would work. This way. In reverse. No. It's the wrong way around. Yeah. It works, just how you connect it. So yeah. Well, I'll play around with it. Careful I'm blowing it from up and I'll see if I can get a good connection. Let's go take a gamble with this DC motor. See if it really is DC. Now I've got the corner transformer pushed all the way in to minimum. Start off there, we'll see what happens. Oh yeah, look at DC. Ah, cheap bath uh, fix this motor meter might have wouldn't tell me it was DC and not give me stupid readings. So yeah, it works. There you go, we've got a DC power supply out of a vintage power map 200 ampere electric welding plant manufactured by Power Machinery, Proprietary Limited. Well, you get Fairhouse Street, South Melbourne, blah blah blah, yep. Primary voltage, 340, 415, or oh, yeah, and three phase. Primary current amps in the primary, 28, 17 to 14. Open circuit voltage, 48 slash 75. Rolling amperage is rated at 200 amps. Duty cycle rated at 25%. Retro sizes, 24 to, uh, 6 to 16 gauge. Weight is 162 pounds. And yes, made in Australia. I don't know how, um, how old it is, but I think it at least the early 60s. It's got a very nice um, design transformer in there. I might one day drill these puppets out and slide this cover off and fix these dents up. And fix this hole up too. Restore it a bit. So yeah, I might show you one day what it looks like inside. But now what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if that motor starts bouncing around. And I'll pull this up slowly, increase the amperage. Now that's a 50 volt outlet there, and that one's at 80 volts, so I'm only going to use this one. Let's pull it up and get more. Get faster. Yep, I think I burnt it out. Yeah, it's just smoking. I think I killed it. The world of transform was having with a bit of load too. Yeah, they're a bit warm. Either the diode is not connected properly because it's only a dodgy connection there, but it was having AC going straight to the motor, so either the diode failed or yeah. My connections to the diodes are pretty crap, so if I 
find a way to solder these properly, this would work. So yeah, that's a uh, rectify an old rod at DC for doing crazy stuff like this. So there you go folks. Thanks for watching.